are gathering Christians in their high schools to be sent out for change. Enlightened students are gathering Christians in their high schools to be sent out for change. Gathering Christians within their high schools to be sent out for change. Are you ready to be enlightened? Are you ready to be enlightened? Are you ready to be enlightened? Are you ready to be enlightened?
thank you once again for joining the Enlightened Students event. Thank you, Jesus, for that amazing worship session. But before we get into the next session, which is testimony, I just want to pray over everyone watching right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you once again for this Enlightened Students event. Thank you for every soul that is watching right now. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would bless them, convict them, strengthen them, and mold them into the person you've called them to be. God, I pray that as they tune in, Father Lord, that they would receive your power, God. Lord, that they would know their purpose, God, and they would walk in the power of God in Jesus' name. God, I pray for every single student, God, that they would realize that there is more to life than just living for the world, but living for God, Jesus, Lord, that they would fully devote themselves and give their lives to you and fully work with you with all their soul, mind, and heart in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you guys for joining, and I pray you are blessed in Jesus' name. Hello, enlightened students. My name is Taya. Um, thank you guys, everyone, for joining in on this event and, and listening to this event i'm watching it and being present and i'm so honored to be able to give my testimony to y'all so i pray that it ministers to somebody out there everybody out here okay um and so yeah my life as a christian started primarily when i was three when my mom got saved in 2006 um and she received christ so yeah i've been a christian since about three years old i've always talked about god and how he's my god and how i love him and you know things like that but i didn't really understand all of that until i was 11 how what it really means to be a christian and what it means to love god what it means to say that hey i'm a christian i love god and you know the intricate details of it all um my parents, my, my mom, my biological dad fought all the time and it was very rare when they actually got along. And so, and also my relationship with my biological dad was strained. Um, he used me in ways that selfishly pleasant himself, but in the same way dehumanized me and humiliated me in the process and i'm still to this day still trying to figure out um how exactly it affected me and how to process that in relationships in my real life relationships um and so even though those things happened to me i can still see that god was god's hand was in it the whole time and Looking back on it all now, I can tell you that it is very clear that God really does change things that are horrible, but turn them into something that you never would have thought was possible. Um, my parents were arguing back and forth this one time out of the many times that they did. And it was like they let the whole apartment know that they were arguing. And I was, I was so tired of dealing with my parents arguing all the time. And I was so tired of deal, dealing with the overbearance and the feelings and the hurt and the underlying trauma my dad caused me that I just cried and cried in the corner of my bedroom, praying for it all to stop, um, for it all to end. Um, but then the Holy Spirit reminded me of a song called "Thy Will" by Hillary Scott in the Hillary Scott fam in the in Scott family, and the chorus says, "Thy will be done." saying saying that over and over again in my head um it encouraged me to the point where i was in peace through it all um i had gotten up from the floor i had gotten in my bed and played that song in the belief that it would that it would make me feel better the part where it said i know you hear me i know you see me lord your plans are for me goodness you have in store was the turning point and I could feel God's hand in that, even though I didn't fully understand what it meant then. But looking back on it all now, um, I see where God was. It, he was right there the entire time. He was right there in my pain. He was right there in my stress. He was right there in the confusion, but holding me in the process. Um, he still is today. And I'm constantly, daily, daily seeing how God is still working from that one situation. If my life didn't make that turn at such a young age, um, I wouldn't be here right now talking to you guys at this age. My 18th birthday is coming up in two weeks um, from now. And I moved here three years ago from Birmingham, Alabama. I'm now in Highsville, Georgia. Um, 
it's all because of this one situation that happened to me. My whole testimony. And it's a building block for, for everything that's going on right now. Um, and that's why I'm here talking to you guys. Telling this testimony to the each of you right now. God is showing who he is to me every day. And I'm always learning about him constantly. Now, why am I telling you all this information? Okay, why am I telling you this? Because maybe you already know. Maybe you don't even know. Maybe you are literally asking why. What is the point of all this? To encourage you. To encourage you. Something that I've gone through. What I've gone through. A lot of people don't make it out the same way that I am out right now. A lot of people come out messed up. A lot of people come out with, with hurt. You know, a lot, a lot of things that damage them. And it's now damaging their relationships that they're in. They can't have a healthy relationship because of something like this has been done to them um it is only by the grace and the provision of jesus christ that i am here is the only possible way are you hurting are you scared are you broken are you looking for hope all of that jesus is the answer jesus is the answer to all of that baggage that you have you all you have to do is give that luggage to him and he will let he he will carry that for you and you don't have to look at it no more he will bear that burden and all you have to do is give surrender your life to him and you're you're set you're set of a life of true peace and you can only get that true peace from him you can only get that true peace from God. Nothing in this world can satisfy you enough to wear true peace from God where you can get that. So if you want that, please receive that. Now it's time for us to actually begin praying. Um, first, I want to give thanks to God for how he made us. Um, we can look at ourselves and see how there's so many parts about us. Um, everyone's different. You can be tall, short, large, small. It doesn't matter. Everyone's different in their own way. So um, I'm going to give you some time right now to pray on your own, and then we can come and pray together. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for how you made our bodies, Father. Thank you for taking your time to make us from clay and to mold us and to shape us and to create us every way that you designed us, Father. Thank you for all our gifts and our talents and abilities that you put into us, Lord, that we are able to share, Lord God. Help us, Father, to share those talents for you and to glorify you, Father. Thank you for protecting us and keeping us. Thank you for keeping our bodies, Lord God, for many things we probably have went through, Lord God. Lord, you have protected us and, and kept us through it all, Father. Because as you, you will continue to protect those who don't have, protect those who are suffering, protect those who need healing for their bodies. And please deliver them and heal them. In Jesus' name, amen. Next, um, we want to pray for physical wholeness in our schools and for us coming together. And I'll give you some time to pray for that.
Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Father God, for everything you have done for us. Father, we ask that you, Lord God, Lord, you would bring a wholeness in our schools, Father. We ask that you, Lord, you would help us to be more kind to another, more loving, or more respectful across the across America, across the whole world, Father. Bring us together with, with your love, with your compassion, with your peace, with your mercy and your grace, Father. We ask that you would bring our hearts together, Father God, and that you would help us to love one another more, to be kind to one another, to share things together with one another more, Father. And Father, we also ask that you, Lord, that you would bring togetherness in our communities, in our homes, in our places of work, wherever we go, for God, that you would bring us together and that you would not have us to be divided or not have us to be separated from people, Lord God, and that you would have us to love one another and to enjoy being around each other and to encourage one another and strengthen one another up. And that you would help us to be our brother and sister's keeper, to keep us each other from doing wrong and to encourage each other to do better. In Jesus' name, amen. There's this last prayer point, um, and it's just for our hearts. Um, many times um, in life, um, we go through things and it tends to turn our hearts cold. And oftentimes we're not able to receive love the right way because um, we've been through things and if we can't receive love, we can't expect to give it because we can't give something to someone that we don't have. Many times people are broken and relationships go bad or, or y'all stop talking because you, you just don't feel them anymore. So let's pray for our hearts right now. And, and I'll give you some time for that right now. Also, um, during this time that you're praying, um, if there's anything on your heart that you need to give to God, um, if there's anything that you need to tell God about anything, any problem, situation, go ahead and tell him he's listening. He's here, he's with you right now, and just tell him openly. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to ask you, Father God. We ask you, Lord, for a more pure heart, Father. We ask you, Lord, for hearts, Lord, that we would obey you, and that we would also help us to love one another more, and that we would be better friends to each other. We ask that you, Lord God, that how you would protect us, you would keep our hearts from damage, keep our hearts from the brokenness of the world, keep our hearts from our past mistakes, our failures, keep our hearts from what even people might have done to us, Father. Keep us and protect our hearts, protect the love that you put inside of our hearts for you, Father God. Father, Lord, the greatest commandment, Lord, you said, Lord God, is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Give us our heart, Lord, to love one another, to not be concerned about everything unnecessary or the rules or everything, but to be concerned with our hearts. So Lord, you look at the hearts, Lord God, while other people look at our appearance. So Father, help us to have hearts that love you, Lord, and to love one another, to care for another, to help each other when we're seeing one broken, that when someone's crying, we pick them up, that when that when someone needs strength, we come there and that we help them and we bring them up, Father God, and that we help them to where they need to be, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Um, unfortunately, this is the end of Enlightened Event, Bradwell. Um, we hope to see you again next time. Um, there are many more events through this um, business. Not business, but um, there are many more events through Enlightened Students that they're doing around the country. I'm traveling. If you want more info, um, go to enlightenedstudents.com. You can go to your Instagram page or the website and check them out. Um, thank you for coming. Um, we love you. God loves you. Um, and have a great day.